Hey everyone, we just got done with the live stream. I was here with Joe Staponzi from Bearded Hardware, and we did the Ryzen 2700X under liquid nitrogen. So we're going to recap the, the end results for that, the Cinebench results, frequency, the voltages, and uh, some of the challenges we encountered with, for example, the other chips. You can see our preparation video from before this one, and this will just be the purely the results from the live stream. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORUS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The AORUS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. So other than the rise in overclocking, we also had some notable overclockers join chat. We had Roman Derbauer join up, and Joe and I uh, poked a lot of fun at him because he is a slacker and still hasn't accepted our challenges. So Roman joined chat, Derbauer was in there talking trash with everybody. We had 10 aka X devs from EBGA and the OC lab, he was there. And then we also had uh, Buildzoid, actually hardcore overclocking join chat. So other than the overclocking, itself, the people in chat made it a lot of fun and hopefully some of them will tune in tomorrow as well. Uh, we're expecting hopefully some EVGA people in for the Kingpin card. So definitely check back just to hang out and chat with them. All right, so Joe, uh, where where did we end up with, with that? That was our best 2700X, is that right? The, yeah. Out of three? Out of three. We're basically at what, 5550, so 5.550 yeah. gigahertz. Yeah, 5550 megahertz, so yeah. So yeah. almost 5.6 gigahertz on our clock. Yeah. And final Cinebench score is 25, 12 points. Yep. And then for point of reference, the stock Cinebench score was 18, 48 points. Yep. So... Uh, Pretty decent if you uh, consider... Roughly 35%, I think. Yeah. 25, 12 is a 36% increase in performance. So... Can't complain about that's that. pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, under air, what was that one doing? And that, uh, that one, uh, that one I didn't test as much. It, it was some, I think it was like a four two. Okay. At about one four two five. That's got pretty much the max I tested on air because it didn't um, seem like any of them liked it any more than that. This one, so for the five, uh, nearly five point six gigahertz, we're five point five five zero. Yeah. What was the voltage? Because you, you changed it a bit. You're like. We well, I started off at like one five five, just uh. from playing around with a couple of chips. And but the problem is, I think it would have it stopped at about five four or five point four seven five. It basically started dying off. So I had to increase the voltage from one five five to one. Actually, I started off at one six. Then I had to increase to one six five for the just a a quarter of a um, megahertz or quarter yeah, of a, it's tw a tw clock. I don't even know how to explain that. 250 megahertz, side. yeah. Yeah, so you can actually basically put it up in steps of uh, a quarters on, on the multiplier, which is weird. In Intel, you don't have that. Yeah. So it's weird to explain, to be honest. So, uh, so 0 yeah, 0.25 multiplier increase. Yeah, so just increasing that um, by one step, I needed to add 0 0.05 to the voltage. Yeah. And then I had to, for the next step of after that, I had to add it again. So. The final clocks, I ended up being at what, 1.85 yes. volts. So Pretty high. from 1.6 to 1.85, just for like, what, three quarters of a, <laughs> a, a, giga, <laughs> a gigahertz. Yeah. yeah, like it's just not, way too much. Not great. And then yeah. uh, the bench is still set up. So oh. here it is. Uh, we showed this in the prep video, but it's got the T Rex pot on it with. Some frost. It's getting getting warm now. It's only minus whatever one hundred. Yeah, uh, it's a, about a minus one hundred C minus now. Minus one hundred C. So yeah, it's heating up. Heating up, and then we never had to break down, so that's good. It wasn't uh, didn't get filled with water. Well, from benching here a bunch of times yesterday, we kind of I figured out exactly kind of how to work it so that way we can live stream a couple <laughs> hours with it. So right. So this is probably the best one we've had. <laughs> yeah. As far as setup wise. And I guess for uh, another point of reference on the Cinebench score, so I said we were at like 25, 12 points or something. Uh, Threadripper 1950X, I just pulled this result up from Hot Hardware in the middle of the stream, yeah. and they were at about 3,000 for 1950X, the original Threadripper high end chip. Yeah. So that's, I mean, considering Cinebench is entirely thread. Multi core, bound, yeah. yeah. That's really not bad. So it's amazing to see that of how the frequency jumps 
compared to the metal yeah. cores. But of, of course, if you take Threadripper and we bench that, yeah, you how much will we'll push yeah. higher than that? Yeah, but yeah, it's so. still impressive to see just between the two different products. Right. We still we're almost out of Allen two on this canister, on this cylinder. So uh, we're near the bottom, and we did refill the Dewar once. So we used probably. Not quite, but nearing 30 liters during the, maybe 20 liters during the stream, something yeah, like that. Yeah, about 20, 30 liters. 20 liters, and then, um, I mean, we, we talked about Alan 2 during the stream about, like, some water in there, about how it works and uh, what it costs to set up, stuff like that. Um, so, I run these, that I, I bought these after seeing you use them. These are just Stanley Cup, they're just thermoses. Yep. Buy them on Amazon or something. You can drink coffee with them too if you want. Yes, don't drink Allen too, but you can drink coffee with yeah. them. And uh, yeah, so these are like less than 20 bucks each. Um, and then you get the Allen two pot. We talked about this during the stream already, but you're using the T Rex from Cane Pin. Yep. And that's a couple of those are like three, four hundred dollars depending. Yep. Uh, David, he has a, well, I don't know if he has a couple of models now, but he has obviously a, there was a range. Yeah. So no, that's his newest in. Greatest, latest, and greatest, I guess yeah. you could say. So. And then uh, Dewar's, a couple hundred dollars, you know, brand new one, 600 if it's 30 liters like this. You can get 10 liter if you want to do this at home. You could bring this over to your local l 2 supplier and have them fill it up or something. Yeah, some of the places that you can go are like welding supply. So if you, maybe if you're, you look up your local welding supplies, where yeah. you're going to find it. Yeah. So, so anyway, the yeah, stream recap. I mean, how do you feel about that overclock? Because... It's much better than it used to be. Yeah. So you're like with AMD, you'd get like a gigahertz and you'd get no performance. <laughs> yeah, on bulldozers. Or something yeah. Like that. So like it, it's kind of fascinating to see how much improvement you have. And if you really compare it to Intel, if you if you were to take away Intel's clocks, the amount of performance that you're getting is actually pretty good. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's still not there yet, but it just shows that there's room for improvement. Right. Right. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. And it's actually kind of fun to overclock, to be honest. Yeah, it went, went well. And then we were running at minus 196 like the whole time yeah. on the temperature. So yeah. that LN2 pot was uh, was about as cold as it can possibly get. Yeah, it was maxed out. We, we have the term called full pot, which means the whole pot was filled with liquid nitrogen the whole time. Yeah. So it was at the max you can get. Sometimes the, the meters or the temp probes can't fully recognize the minus 196. But yeah, it well, was at pretty much there. It's also depends on where that pro was placed. Yeah, like there's that. a lot of variables in there, but yeah. yeah. But it's close enough. So yeah, we're <clears throat> running it as cold as it can get. I guess let's let's talk about this too. So the twenty seven hundred X gold, we talked about this during the stream. This is that like Lisa Sue like signed by machine gold edition one. Uh Andy does not advertise this to be fair to them as a binned chip. They don't say it's better. You kind of hope it is because you're paying more for it, and it's called gold. That was kind of my hope, but yeah, yeah, mine too. But where did where did you end up with this when we were bending them? Um, so on liquid nitrogen, I had we had three chips, so two other chips, and then we had this chip. So uh, obviously, you saw the max of the the uh, 5550. The other one did about 5500, mm. or just basically 55, and then this one did about 4.75. So or. 5.475, yeah, so it wasn't even at 55. So yeah, it was kind of disappointing. It was the worst chip out of all of we them. We couldn't get it to 5.5 gigahertz on Allen 2. And on Air, I couldn't get it to 4.2 gigahertz. Yeah. So uh, the, I guess it, you, uh, it's kind of interesting how you see uh, how they are on Air, because the other two chips were better than that one on, on Air. Yeah. And so you kind of see like the reference on. You can kind of use Air to predict where it's yeah. going to be. Yeah. It's so. just like in, on Intel, it's very similar too. Where you can basically, if, if you have an amazing chip on air, then most likely it's going to be an amazing chip on Allen 2. Very disappointed, though, in that gold edition. Like, yeah, I was, still, I was hoping it was going to be a gold golden sample. sample. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but not so much. No, no. So, yeah, we did end up, though, with scores that are pretty good. I think Hardware Numbers currently has the number one score in Cinebench. He's got a good chip, man. Is that like 5.7 something yeah. gigahertz? And we couldn't get that high, but we got I, pretty damn up there. Yeah, we got up there. And consistent, too. That was the same max that I got the other day. So, obviously, we're doing, doing something right. Yeah. But. So, that's the, the Ryzen side of the stream. Thank you for all those who watched. And, and that's your really quick recap for those who missed the stream. Um, the next stream, we still have this entire tank of Allen 2. It hasn't really leaked at all, which is great. 180 liters. And that will be used. I think the stream... 
going up tomorrow, which, well, I, sh I should just give a date, I guess, but Sunday, uh, the 12th of May, uh, that is going to be this card, so the Kingpin 2080 Ti, and we're just going to run the CPU on water, probably, and it's going to be, uh, I guess, a 9980 XE with yeah. X299. So that'll be our, our bench tomorrow. This will be the, the card of the point of focus. And there's the LN2 pot. We showed that already. And um, yeah, just got to prep this now. And that'll be the next stream. So Sunday, uh, May 12th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So when it's 1 p.m. in New York City, that's when we will be streaming. Um, so yeah, that'll be the next one. We'll, it should be more active, right? Like from, uh, from what you were saying, I think this one will be a bit more yeah, it's going to be much more active, a lot more pouring. I can't just pour it all on there. We're, we need to figure it out. So we're probably going to be benching around the minus 130 range. Yeah. So from there, it's a, lot, it's a lot more going on. It's not going to be where I'm just pouring and it's done. Yeah. So it, it's just the temperature range of certain components. It's also a uh, much higher wattage. So the, the chip gets runs pretty hot, and then the LN2 pot's smaller. We'll probably run into way more issues, to be honest. Yes. So. so it should be a more exciting stream yeah. from that perspective. But this one is still pretty exciting because uh, over 5.5 gigahertz on Ryzen is not something you see every day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it gives you perspective on where it can go in the future, but uh, will not be going. You're, you're not going to get a 5.5 gigahertz Ryzen chip from AMD anytime soon. So don't get your hopes too high. <laughs> <laughs> Good not, luck. Not going to run like that on air. Yeah, for real. So, all right, that's it, though. Thanks for watching the recap. I think we're... We're going to start prepping this card so we can be ready for the next one. Subscribe to catch that. You can find Joe on the Bearded Hardware YouTube channel linked in the description below or beardedhardware.com. And you know where to find us. So check back for the next video. We'll see you all next time.